It's truly a blessing to uh, be here again today and to study the Word of God with you. And as we study the Word of God, just before we begin, let us um, go to God in prayer. Great God, we just want to thank you for another day, dear Father, that you have given us. Another day that we are here, dear God, alive, dear God, and able to do work for you, dear Father. We thank you for that blessing. Uh, many people don't have that ability now, dear God, because they are not here, their words. And so, dear God, we thank you that we are here so that we can work for you, dear God, on behalf of you, dear Father. And God, as we do that, dear God, let us do it in a humble way, dear Father. Not being puffed up, dear God, but very humble, dear God, knowing that all the honor and the glory goes to you. Father in heaven, we uh, pray for Sister Janice, dear God. We also pray for, we pray for Brother Art, dear God, and his therapy, dear God. We trust that he, he is doing well, dear God. We pray also for Brother Harry, dear God. May you be with him, dear Father, as he recovers. God, we, we also pray for Sister Diana Bill, dear God, as she recovers from surgery also. Lord, may you be with us, dear God, as we as we study your word, may you be with your humble servant, dear God, and uh, uh, give him the red recollection, uh, the things that he has studied, dear God, that uh, he will part it in such a way that we will have a clear understanding of your word. Father, we pray for Sister Tracy, dear God, be with her also, dear God. Continue to bless all those who are sick, dear God, Sister Carol, dear God. Uh, that is called Rocco, dear God, be with her, dear Father. Mm -hmm. Also pray for Sister uh, Carl Batosin, dear God, be with her also, dear Father. Almighty God, we pray for the elderly, dear God, in our congregation, all the elderly, dear Father, be with them, dear Father. Uh, we pray for Sister May, dear God, be with her and her family, dear God, and continue to bless them, dear Father. We also pray for that hard-fighting soul, dear, dear God, Sister Madeline, dear God, may you be with her, dear God, and just continue to bless her as you continue to give her longevity of life, dear God. Be with her and continue to provide her every need. Father, be with us, dear God, as we study your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Just an update on Brother Harry before we start. Brother Harry have had successful surgery, as you may know, and he is at home recovering. And he said that the recovery, the recovering is going well. He is having less and less pain. He will be uh, at the doctor's on Friday, coming God, God's willing, so that they can do his follow-up. All right. Um, it was a major surgery, even to the extent that I could not imagine, but it's up to him to tell you that, but it was a really major surgery. Uh, so let us continue to pray for him and let us thank God that he brought him through. Okay? Amen. All right. I also pray for Sister Tracy. She texted this morning, said she couldn't come, she wasn't feeling well. So pray for this household as well. All right? Uh, while I was asking about Sister Burleson this morning, I saw the strange lady in the congregation, you know. She looked just like Sister Burleson, you know, so I was asking if it, if it was. But I didn't look at her to say that. I looked across to the other side of the room, you know. But it wasn't her. Amen. You never know how, how things happen, you know. Yeah, that's true. You know, God works in mysterious ways. She, she walked in there. I know Sister Burleson have a, like a walker, you know. Mm -hmm. But you never know how things could happen. With God, all things are That's possible. True. I think right. if I ever see Mary Sullivan walk in the door, I'll fall on the floor. That's all right. That's all right. She'll so be here. Last year, last August, she said she was coming to church. <laughs> you know, you can't watch the news on the TV. She, 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 she'll, be she'll be here. She'll be here. Remember, we are live, okay? So, yeah, just one thing I want to mention. I think yeah. somebody that's sitting right next to me might have helped put in an air conditioner for, you, for her. Yes. So uh, I just think. 
Yes, so very nice. Thank you, I thank um, Sheikh and Joan for putting in a air condition yeah. for her. I and Roland put one in previously. We thank him too. I think Roland right, so. and I worked on one as well. Way back yeah. Yeah. The air conditioner. So we should do. That's right. So God always work out something for us. Yes. That's one thing we know. God will always work out something for us. Mm -hmm. You know. She called on the church, but uh, believe me, I. I didn't have the time. I'm really stressed with time. <laughs> Each and every one of you may know, but I'm really stressed with time, and um, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Uh, but God always provides. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. Um, okay. There is something. There is a ring that we found. Um, it's mine. I don't know who it's from. Is it reaching for your the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry for the breaking transmission, but I'm looking for that ring that uh, Sister Lisa. It's the same ring that you're talking about a ring. That Sister Lisa gave me. I didn't lost it. I know it's in my bag somewhere. Do I make sure it in an eye? <laughs> anyway, there is a there is a ring and um, look in the pockets there. Maybe it's there and uh, I just can't find it now. I just can't lay hold on it. But boss lady is uh, going to the bag. She will she will find it hopefully, and uh, we'll be able to show it and uh, claim it's a big finger person. It's not a little finger person. It didn't look like a woman's ring, so no diamonds on it. <laughs> okay. It did not look like a lady's ring. Okay, so we are on uh, the second missionary journey. Uh, all right, we're studying Paul, uh, Paul's conversion and missionary journey. So we are on the second missionary journey, part one. The old book is page 47. We're picking up from where we left off. So, um, Sister I. I know you should be right there. I think you are there, yes. We are under 47 in the old book. The new book is what page? You're right. Yes, she's there. Now, the last time we um, we studied how Paul uh, had, we had touched on how Paul had uh, just came from Jerusalem speaking about uh, trying to set something straight right <clears throat> about circumcision that the Jewish brethren was bringing a yoke upon uh, upon the Gentile brethren right uh, that they should be should have the physical circumcision right but uh, Paul um, Paul and Barnabas they went to Jerusalem Paul went to Jerusalem and and they sought this thing out and now he comes back on his second missionary journey and he is circumcising Timothy, Lord of mercy. And so you may wonder then, if he just come out from Jerusalem, right, setting that thing straight, then why now he circumcising Timothy, right? And um, <clears throat> before we uh, go into that, let's, um, you have search. Oh yes, it's there, yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Now I'll put it in this, yeah. Okay, um, it is a huge ring, right? Silver? Silver, yes. I thought of Brother Jonathan when I saw it. I said that, that might be his. <laughs> it might be yours, you know? Yeah, look that at this one. Huh? Wow. Look, because I bought, I bought another one. Oh. It's a replacement ring. Oh, okay. Oh, you see? That's yeah. amazing. That's what I was doing. No, it's my ass. Right. It's original. I lost it. Right. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. It's a good one now. Let's get into that book. Okay. All right. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Forget about the ring now. Let's bring our concentration back to the Bible study. Please. Please. All right. 
we will ask Brother Jonathan to lead us in prayer when we when we finish. All right, he can bring one of the rings back, get back some money. <laughs> <laughs> this is the stock ring now. Maybe maybe, um, maybe ten grand. He will he will go back and get back his ten grand for you for the replacement <laughs> one. Okay. So we are saying that Paul um, um, circumcised Timothy, and uh, we want to know why. First Corinthians chapter nine, reading from verse nineteen. Do anyone have that? Can you read? First Corinthians chapter nine, reading from verse nineteen. Okay. Read aloud, please. Nineteen through. Nineteen through. Uh, the end of the chapter. Oh, wow. What else want to know? <laughs> or, okay, so this is first Corinthians. Okay, okay, Brother Steve, you take from 19 through 23, and then somebody else will take from 24 to the end of the chapter. I'll get it. All right, okay. All right, so this is uh, first Corinthians 9, starting at verse 19. 19. Okay. Yes. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win the more. And to the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might win the Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without law, as without law, not being without law toward God, but under the law toward Christ, that I might win those who are without law. To the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might be up by all means save some. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partaker of it with you. Okay, Brother Wayne. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the, in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. No, I beat my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Amen. Thank you very much. Now we see here, right, that Paul is saying, he said, for though I am a free man, right, though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, right? Uh, in other words, he, he, Paul is saying here, I'm not obligated to do certain things for, 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 for for men, right? I'm not obligated, but <clears throat> I'm called to be a servant, so I want to serve all, right? That I might win the more, right? He wants to win more souls. That's, that's Paul's ultimate goal, to win more souls. Shouldn't be that uh, our ultimate goal also, to win more souls for Christ? Say yes. Okay, and, and, and um, okay. All right, and to the Jews I became a Jew. So to the Jews, he become a Jew, right? He do, uh, I guess he's doing like Jewish things. He follow Jewish customs, right? When he's among them. Uh, that I might win Jews. Uh, to those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. He's, he's speaking about the Gentiles now. To those who are without, sorry, now he's speaking about the Gentiles. To those who are without law, as without law, not being without law toward God, but under law towards Christ, that I might win those who are without law. To, to the weak I become as weak. So he's, he's saying here, he, he adopt himself to suit, right? To the weak he becomes weak. Right? That I might win the weak. Right? In other words, he reached to people wherever they are. Right? He reached down to them wherever they are. And he, to bring them to Christ. I have become all things to all men. Right? That I might by all means save some. 
right? And Paul uh, becoming all things to all men. We've got to be careful when we try to become all things to all men because we might uh, find ourselves conforming uh, uh, our, uh, our teaching to, to man-made doctrine. We have to be careful when we are um, um, conforming uh, to, to men. When we are, um, I might win the week, I have become all things to all men. We've got to be careful when we try to become all things to all men. Right? Because if we are weak, we could be easily led astray if we are weak. Right? Um, as I usually tell some people, uh, be careful when you look at this television program because it's not all of them that are biblical, scriptural, right? And it could lead you astray. And look, when you're looking at them, the emotion, if you are, if you are an emotional person, you are easily drawn to it, right? And, you, and we have to be careful when we do that. If you know you're weak, uh, just stay away from them. You, you understand? I saw your hand up, sister. I, I, what I get from that is not necessarily that you're going to do what they're doing in terms of spiritual or anything like that. I think what I get from it is if you are going to minister to someone who's poor, right? Um, say for example, you're not going to dress like like you, you, you go, you know, you, you're gonna dress down to match the person. Right. You're not gonna go in the most expensive outfit to deal with somebody who's poor, right? Because they're gonna look at you in a different way, and they're going to form a, you know, a, a perception of you where they might block you out. You have to show. You have to be versatile. I don't think, personally, I don't think it means that when he says you need to be weak with them, right? I don't think it's a weakness in terms of spiritual I think it's, right. like, it's, it's like you have to be humble, you have to humble yourself to be able Yes, you're right. I didn't, I, I didn't mean it's a weakness itself, right? I didn't mean it's a weakness itself, I mean, because Paul wouldn't bring himself to be weak. You, you understand right. what I'm saying? Right. It's, I agree with Sister Joe. Yeah. I, I think that we want to do is whoever he was talking to, he wanted to relate to them. That's right. So then, I mean, same thing with you know, the, the apostle. I mean, he came from all different walks of life. Right. You had a tax collector, you had a physician, you had a fisherman. Right. And we read this passage because of Paul having to circumcise Timothy after he just came from Jerusalem. <laughs> right? Condemning the um, the Jewish brethren uh, uh, as to putting a yoke on the Gentiles uh, uh, for saying that if they don't circumcise physically, they are not part of God's kingdom. Right? He just came out and disputed that in in Jerusalem, and now he's coming to and now he's coming and circumcised um, physically circumcised Timothy. Right? And we know the reason why. Right? What's the reason why he was circumcised in Timothy? The reason he was circumcised in Timothy? For his acceptance, right, among the Jewish brethren, right? So, so, so then Paul could reach more Jewish brethren in the synagogue, right? If, if Timothy wasn't circumcised, he, he would not... Uh, I don't, I, I'm not certain if he would even be allowed to go in certain places in the synagogue if, if he wasn't circumcised, right? So um, by circumcising him, using this what we call expediency, right, uh, um, he was able to, to, um, to reach more of the Jewish people. Okay, Sister Marvin first, and then Sister Mark, Sister Mark. Also, I don't know that if he was going to be preaching to the Jews, that the Jews would listen to right. Timothy's message. He would be a stumbling block. Right. And so I think maybe for that reason he had to serve. Very good point. That's that's the ultimate reason, right? Maybe because uh, point point taken, straight point, straight to it, Timothy would have been a stumbling block to, to the Jews. 
right, if he was not circumcised, right? And uh, Sister Margaret? So, I realized that the church was just getting started then, so they had to try to reach all different people. But today, would you go in another church? Would you go in the Catholic church and try to talk to people and try to um, do what they do during that church service? That's I, I think, the reason I think about this is, you know, when my brother and his wife were here and their kids, I was always wanting to bring the kids here. And a couple times, Trisha asked me to go so, to something at her church. Mm -hmm. I, I fought with myself. I eventually went a couple times because I thought, if I'm going to refuse her, she gonna refuse she's going to come back. refuse me. So right. I, where do you draw the line on that? Like, we're supposed I know, to go to a baptism. <laughs> we're supposed to go to a baptism, and I'm like... I, I want to go because I love this family, but right. I, if I go, does that mean I'm saying that, yes, it's okay to baptize a baby? No, no. Um, look, I am the godfather of what, about seven children, right? <laughs> right? And I've never been um, to the church where they've been so-called baptized, right? First thing, I let them know that um, I let them know what I believe, right? But I could be your child's godfather, right? I could be, and I will. The responsibility that comes with it, I accept it wholeheartedly. And you could know when somebody accepts it wholeheartedly in the progress of the children's life. If you taking care of them like you made your own, right? Now, if, if I decided to be somebody's God father, I am responsible for this person's upbringing just as their parents are responsible. If their parents cannot afford them a college education, I have to step in. It's a great responsibility. It's like your own child. Some people take it lightly, but I take mine seriously, right? And I treat them like they are, they are my own children. You understand? So when everyone asks me how many children I have, so sometimes I say, and I say seven, or I say eight, right? You know? You know? But I, sometimes I don't get a chance to qualify it, you know? You. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let me finish my point first. I, I, didn't, I didn't finish answering your question. Right? Now, I won't say it's a sin for you to go. I cannot say that. Right? I cannot say that. But I do not go and have my reason for not going. Because the reason I'm not going is because it upsets me so much when I go in there and I see what they do. Because I was in that faith, right? I went to a school there, elementary school, and I knew what we had to do, and I knew it's not biblical, right? I know it's not biblical, and so this is why I do not go. Will God punish you for that? That will be between you and God, right? But, oh, oh, hold on, I'm, 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 I'm not finished yet. <laughs> Brother Drell and I were speaking um, when he was up here. We got a ch chance to speak a lot about things. And, and he, asked me, he asked me the question, will I go to another um, de de denomination? And he, they invite me. Uh, if, uh, if they invite me to preach. I said, yes, I would go. If a denomination invite me to preach, I would go. But I know they would not invite me back. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. you could bet that they would not invite me back because I would preach the word of God. It's an opportunity I have, that one and only chance I have to preach to, 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 to a whole set of people who never really heard the gospel of Christ. Sounds like In its simplicity. That's right. You know? And he told me um, what happened to him once, right? They invite him. <laughs> 
And the same thing happened. He never preached, and they never invited him again. Right? It's the, it's the, it, you see, you understand where I'm coming from, right? Look, I cannot say, I cannot say that, uh, look, if, if you go with her, then you got to ask, this, well, you won't know that unless you um, do the acts that you need to do. You won't know if you would come and really obey the gospel. But when she comes and obey the gospel, right, and, and it's because you had visited her there, hey. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, 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 be, I become a, a I become a Jew to, 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 to win the Jewish. Uh, I become a Gentile. I become weak to win the weak. Right? I become strong to win the strong. Right? Yes, you are saying something. I went to a Christian recently. Um, it's someone close to me. And they asked, they invited. I went. I went to support her. Mm -hmm. I went to support the child. I went to support them as a family. Um, but I did say to her that you know that this is not biblical, right? I said there's nowhere you don't do not baptize a child, you do not. But this is how they consider it. it's a blessing. You're, it's a, like you're praying for the child, right? And you're asking. There was no, there was no water sprinkling. It wasn't a Catholic church, right? But there was no water sprinkling. All they did was to pray for the child. No. This is biblical. Yes. yes. Uh, so, so, right. So basically, I don't think that there's a problem in praying for a child and asking a congregation to bless or pray for a child. No, there's no problem in that. Right, and that's that's what that was, right? Um, even though I I told her that listen, there's no such thing as a, a Christian in our baptism for a baby. She understands that, but this is what like a dedication. We call it a dedication. Yeah, so personally, I, I, I went, and I went for to, to support them. Right. right? It's, it's basically support, right? And it's basically the support you are giving. You are not going there to participate. No. You are well going there to support the child, right? This, this is what you're really going there for. Oh, okay, Sister, oh, oh, Sister Sue's hand was up for us, yeah. <laughs> um... You know, maybe people need to realize where infant baptism comes from. You know, the people way back, they knew how important baptism was for salvation. And so many children were dying young that they wanted to baptize them because they weren't quite sure they were going to make it to being older. Yeah, and that's how infant baptism got started. What it's not like I, you know, you say to people, well, you know, there's no record of it in the Bible. So you kind of understand where people came from. They knew how important baptism was for salvation. So they didn't want their child to die without being saved, so they tried to baptize them as soon as possible because back then so many children didn't make it, you know. So they realized how important baptism was. So it became a custom. So then it became a custom, and that's how it got started. And if you ask people nowadays, they don't know where it got started from. They just do it because that's what the church says to do. Okay. When... Um, the children was coming to Christ when Christ walked on earth, right? We know that Christ walked on earth, right? Okay, okay. good. So when Christ walked on earth, and he, one day he was there when the children were coming to him, and the disciples were trying to prevent the children from coming to him. And what did he say? Don't hinder them. Don't they hinder them. Suffer the, <laughs> suffer the children and forbid them not to come unto me for such is the kingdom of heaven, right? He's he, he not going to say, they are part of the kingdom of heaven. Don't forbid them to come. Uh, what I say is, uh, if you look in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul deals with uh, that little battle of our conscience. Yeah. Okay, so he talks about, you know, uh, someone invites you over to their house for dinner. Right. You know, and you want to go, go. Go, go. give thanks and eat. Yeah, give thanks and eat. Give thanks and eat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But now, if the person says, this food was offering for an idol, 
and it's going to disturb your conscience. So they, but they were nice enough to tell you. Right. Then don't. No. Right. If, if you're going to disturb your conscience, right. you're going to disturb your conscience, right. don't do it. But he says, but, but don't think about yourself. Think about the person across you. Right. So he's saying, think about the other person's feelings. Try not to hurt their feelings. But don't compromise your integrity. Right. But he's saying, you know, listen, if there's food there, eat the food. God created it. Right. It's fine. If that's so, so, so when it comes to these, well, my friend, you know, the Catholic, and inviting me to the, uh, to the baptism, you can go and lend your support. I don't see anything wrong with that. Now, if they really want to know what the answer is, then it's our obligation to give them what the true answer is yeah. right. and point them the way. Well, but, that. but, yeah, right, right. Well, and, and, yeah. No, I, I have family members that are Catholic, and yeah. they're not going to change. Right. That's fine. And, 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 I, and, and, and the way I look at it is, you know, there was uh, some that were mm-hmm. preaching uh, Jesus' gospel. And the disciples said, you know, Jesus, this guy is talking and he's baptizing in your name, but he doesn't run with us. Now, Jesus didn't say, go get those clowns and bring them to me. He said, hey, if they're not, if they're not, if they're not against me, they're with me. And he said, leave them be. So I don't press on other people's religion for that fact. If those people still believe that Jesus is the Son of God, amen to that. I can't, I can't walk with them. On, you know, in religious terms, you know, because we understand the truth from the right. Bible. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't want to insult them or do anything like that. And I won't participate in things that I know is going to disturb my conscience. Right. I'm not. You know, right. I'm not going to pray to the Virgin Mary. There's nothing here that says to do that. Right. So I can't do that in good consciousness. So I, She's so waiting for the judgment like anyone anyone else. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So, so, you know, our job is, our job, or our responsibility, you know, of course, first and foremost to the Lord, but also to our, our fellow our fellow man. So the person sitting across from you, you want to be good to them and be nice to them. You don't want it to be that, I don't want to be a Christian like that guy. You don't want to close the door in <laughs> you don't want to close the door. with that person either, because you might be able to have an, an opportunity to talk to somebody about right. God. And you, and you never know. I mean, uh, I lost a friend uh, recently, a few months ago. And we were all we were schoolmates, and that's how long we've known each other. And one of my schoolmates is an atheist. He's an absolute atheist. But after this death, this tragedy that happened, you know, we're sitting and talking about it because we're all in shock. He's like, you know, a year younger than I am. And, uh, and for the first time, this atheist tells me, I love you. Because John, I just want to tell you I love you. And I thank God. And I'm like, wow. I was floored. Wow. And he's a guy who doesn't believe in God. Mm-hmm. He doesn't. I mean, I'm telling you, he's all about science and everything else. So anything but God. But right here it is. It took this tragedy. Mm-hmm. And what comes out of his mouth was like, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. He said, I love you. And I want to say thank God. And I'm like, wow. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wow. There's an opportunity. There's an opportunity. So who knows? I'm hoping that it'll bring him forward. That's what I'm getting. You plant a seed. Yeah, you plant a seed. You believe that. That's, but like I said, Paul, go, go and read it for yourselves. First Corinthians chapter 10, starts at verse 23 to the end of the chapter. And he tells you, you know, everything is lawful, not beneficial, <laughs> but everything is lawful. And, you know, it's a, it's a very good read. And that'll help you. I think that'll help guide you when it comes to those situations where, you, where you're conscious of you know, wrestling with you. Okay. Sister May, you have a comment? My grandson, um, I don't really understand the uh, denomination. They say they're not the denomination. But anyway, when he was back, he wasn't, they don't believe in baptizing. It was like they said you're only supposed to be immersed in the war because they explained everything when I went to the baptism because I didn't want to go. But they believe in when you, I think it's from Abraham, when you, when a child is born, you're supposed to give it to the father. And the father dedicated that child back to God. And we went to the dedication, we went to the dedication, and um, he gave the, uh, my grandson, my great grandson, to his father. And 
Jesus, the instruction that Jesus gave, right? He, he said, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature in that believer, and the baptized shall be saved. Baptism is for remission of sins, as noted in Acts uh, chapter uh, 2, verses uh, 37 to 38, and uh, um, Galatians and Peter uh, said that too, and Romans 6, 1 to 6, right? Uh, because we might have somebody confused Okay, Jesus, Jesus get baptized. If then baptism is not for the remission of sins, then he did not know sin. Well, that was before he died. And that was before he died, right? Because this baptism for the remission of sins, right, uh, established uh, after Christ shed his blood. There was a baptism of repentance too, mind you, John's baptism. And, a baptism of, of, of repentance to, to bring you in the kingdom. But after Christ died, he left a format, right? He left the format. He left the formula for us, right? So we don't have to uh, choose anybody else's formula because Christ left the formula for us, right? We, we, yes, yeah, that's what I do. We say, we go back to Paul again. He says, but if our gospel is veiled, Right? In other words, if the person on the cross from you they can't get it, they are willing. You ain't going to get it. Right. They ain't going to get it. They are veiled to those who do not know it. The gospel is veiled. It is veiled to those who are perishing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Whose mind the God of this age has blinded. blinded. Yeah. And we have a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I got a buddy of mine from school. We know each other for years. Maybe it'll come through. But boy, it's been like this. It's been veiled. It's yes. It's been veiled. Okay. All right. So, well. May has her hand up. Yes. Yes, Sister May. Um, we belong to the, um, well, my husband, I joined, I mean, I believe in going to the church with my husband, going to, you know, a family. But 
well, he went to the Methodist Church. church. He went to uh, the uh, African American church uh, in Lebanon for 32 years. And uh, the bishop, my husband got mentioned to be baptized. And the bishop said, uh, we don't baptize. Wow. So my husband left the church and um, went to he went to a Baptist church. Uh, I was coming here at that particular time. But uh, he said he did. I think he misunderstood the Church of Christ. My, my sister belonged to a Church of Christ. The Church of Jesus and Church of Christ in North Carolina. My, my husband didn't like it. He, he didn't understand. He thought the same type of church, but like that. So mm -hmm. he didn't come here. I mean, he came here. He came and visited a few times, yeah. Because mm -hmm. he. He didn't want to answer anything about baptism, so he went to a Baptist church to be baptized, and he was baptized there. But we went there 32 years, and my husband passed. We got in touch with those ministers, and we the ministers would come to the, um, the minister from the Methodist church would not come. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it really bothered me because I couldn't understand it. If he even believed in God, I could do that. And then the, the the other church, my husband had got sick, he wasn't able to go to church, but he was in his ties. They would not come and give him communion. So he stopped sending his ties. So they wouldn't come because they wouldn't get his ties. I never, I never, I never understood that. And he didn't talk about it. He said, I just prayed for them. No, no, that is. Wow, that's something. You just believe in the I don't believe the church down. I just believe in God. I'll just pray for them. <laughs> what you did for the last two years is just pray. You come to church, you come down. And you didn't pray for them. But that was the most strange thing. I yeah, heard. I know. There is so much teachings out there that the one thing I gotta say, right? Sticking to God's word, you would never go wrong with it. Amen. Right? Well, you see, they go by the, 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 some kind of doctrine. There will be, yeah, there will be all sorts of false teachers. The Bible tells us about them, right? Mm -hmm. So we ought to be careful. So there will be false teachers among, even among you, the scripture says. So we got to be careful. As long as we, we stick to what, what the word of God says, that is good enough, okay? Um, well, when you turn over that page, you're on page 48 for next time with the journey to Philippi, and we will be in the middle of the book. Whoa, time gone. We're in the middle of the book, right? Progress. <laughs> We're making progress, right? <laughs> okay, and uh, we'll ask Brother Jonathan to lead us in prayer as we close. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Let's pray. Our gracious and almighty Father, Lord, we, we give thanks, Father, for this day, for this opportunity to come and worship you and give praise and glory and thanks to you, Father. And we pray uh, that all is pleasing in your sight, Father. We give thanks for this uh, wonderful class uh, with uh, very interesting and uh, good discussion, Father. And again, uh, Lord, we pray that all that was said and done was uh, glorifying you, Father, and was pleasing in your sight. Um, Lord, we want to remember those that were mentioned as being sick, uh, some that are uh, shut-in, Father. We pray for them for strength, for comfort. Um, we think especially of our brother Harry, uh, who uh, is one of the uh, pillars of the Korean church, Father. Um, Lord, he's, he's worked so hard uh, for you, Father. Um, dedicated his life, him and his wife dedicated his life to you. And uh, Lord, we just pray for them. And uh, pray that Harry heals up quickly. We're uh, so encouraged to hear that he is doing well and recovering. And we just pray, Father, that you continue to put your hand upon him and to give him that strength that he needs, Father, so he can go back to doing uh, your work, Father, uh, that, he, that he loves to do. Uh, again, Father, we just pray for uh, those among us, Father, uh, those who might be dealing with any kind of struggles, Lord. Um, those might be uh, in conflict because of family and things like that, Father. Uh, things that we don't often talk about, Lord. But uh, 
Father, you know what's in our hearts. You know what's uh, deep within us, Father, our fears. Uh, Lord, uh, help us to remember that you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Yes. And there's no one above you, uh, no one beyond you. And that with you, all things are possible, Father. So help us, Lord, to remember that, to encourage one another with those words, Father, to always be found pleasing in your sight, loving, uh, joyful, loving, and having uh, hope, Father. And we pray that that could, uh, at the very least, uh, affect other people around us, Father, and show them the way. Lord, be with us as we depart from here. Uh, all these things we ask in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.